So this is a pre-session and we have three things on the agenda. Um, we're going to go around first of all, and just for the people who are here, pre-session is was set up so council could discuss things inside of the Sunshine Law so that uh, we can just have discussions without breaking the law. Um, yeah. So it is an open meeting, but we don't have public comment. Um, so let's do a real fast uh, roll call. Mayor Peck. Um, Council Member Susie Lalma Ferry. Council Member Sean McCoy. Councilwoman Diane Christ. And Aaron Rodriguez, Council Rodriguez, is on the road driving from uh, Denver. Um, and Council Martin. Uh, yes. Hello. <laughs> and uh, Councilor Yarbrough is in Japan with Sister Cities, but she sent me a blurb to say. So I am going to up, uh, redo this agenda topics to discuss and put C, discuss Councilor Martin's statement from the July 9th Council meeting. Um, so we're going to do that first. And um, I, I want to open it up. Um, and then I want to go around to everybody and have you give your uh, ideas uh, as to your comments about the statement, about what uh, Marsha has said in the statement and moving forward. And that is that goes for you too as well, Marsha. By the way, we use first names in here. We're not formal. We're not formal. So, uh, so Marsha, I'm going to open it up and then we can go around and, and have comments about uh, what, it, what we're doing. So, and I want to thank you, Jean, for sending us what the charter says and all of these uh, other recommendations, um, maybe descriptions, really, of what domiciles, et cetera, mean. So, um, I am going to say, first of all, that what I see as a concern, and Marcia, you and I talked about this a little bit, but I don't think the rest of council knows. Mm -hmm. um, it's the status um, that New York has put on, on you when you signed a long-term lease in New York. Um, uh, my research in family members' experience in New York is that once you sign and have lived in New York for 183 days, you're considered a resident. And even though Colorado doesn't have that uh, stipulation, New York does. Um, the clock starts ticking the moment you've paid rent, start paying rent. And New York will start collecting taxes from a renter that has been there long term, after that long term is 183 days. And if I have this correctly, it's approximately 13.3%. Um, so where does that leave us in War II representation? Um, what we decide right now tonight, or talk about, we're not going to decide anything, we don't decide things in here, uh, is that what we do sets a precedent and a policy that can be taken advantage of. Virtual attendance was not meant to be a permanent policy for counselors. And uh, we made a motion, and this is where I'm stuck a little bit, and I, I think it's a good discussion by council, at the May 14th meeting, because uh, Sean was gone and you were gone at the same time. Sean was gone on vacation, was out, and so we made a motion, I'm going to read it, um, Joan Peck moved, seconded by Diane Christ, to allow council members Martin and McCoy to participate remotely until no longer needed per Rule 25.2A.2 of the Council's Rules of Procedure. And what that means, uh, no longer needed, is you no longer need to uh, attend remotely. You can attend in person. So having that information, and I hope all of you read what Eugene passed out mm -hmm. as far as residency, it looks like it, it can be uh, explained several different ways. Mm -hmm by several different lawyers and uh, states. So it isn't really clear. Um, so I'm just going to open that up for discussion. Marcia, do you have anything to say, first of all? Oh, I want to thank you. Before you go, I want to thank you for your statement. Because um, 
I think you laid it out very clear, and I, I think that I speak for all of council when we all totally empathize with your position as a mother, as a, as a human being. Um, but we have to take off that hat and put on the counselor hat as a group that is supposed to run the city of Long Island. So uh, having said that, I'm going to put it back well, on you. I would like to speak last. Okay. I would like to clarify some things. Okay. Um, I, uh, 180 days is essentially six months, which is the same as the Colorado residency requirement. So unless I do something else, like register to vote in New York or earn money in New York, um, I will not have established residency here for six months. Um, which, by the way, is essentially the same time uh, as I set for myself in terms of, well, you know, if I don't know what's going on and I'm unable to move back to Colorado on a permanent basis by the end of 2024, which is now less than six months away, um, I uh, would in fact resign and I've promised the public that I will do so. Um, that also saves the um, the city the most money as it allows the council to appoint rather than run a special election. Um, and I have a very strong conviction, which has just, it's, it's, it's even been strengthened since I, um, uh, since I made my first emergency trip to New York. Um, there have been several really earth-shattering policy changes that um, we have a lot of, of, I think, differences of opinion on among ourselves and diff certainly differences of opinion among the council. So I think it would be uh, unwise to have a six-person council during that time, which is what would happen if I resigned resign now. Um, I will further note that with the exception of, of uh, one person who called for my resignation in the anonymous venue of the Times TC line, uh, that uh, all the commentary from residents that I have received has been in support of um, uh, my remaining on council. Okay, um, I'll open it up then to whoever some council would like to speak. But I, I do want to say you're correct, Marcia, in that um, it does coincide with the time that you said you would uh, resign if things have been. And that's a promise. If I'm not back in my house um, before January 1st of this year, I will resign. Okay. So who would like to speak to this or discuss it? Well, Sean. I. Uh, I'll have to tell you that uh, appointment is something that I would I would not be comfortable with, and nor will I support. Uh, I think that uh, we, uh, and I don't think uh, waiting till November 2025 to, if you do decide to resign, uh, is uh, appropriate. I don't like that either. Um, a special election does cost money, and that's at least a third of the community that we'd have to hold the special election for. I think uh, um, that, uh, um, as I said in, in an email to you, that uh, your family comes first, just like everybody here has said, and wants you <coughs> want things to be uh, good for you, and your daughter especially, who want uh, your family to be intact and whole and, and uh, healthy. And there's no, uh, 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 you know, issue there. We, that's that's bottom line. But I, I do believe that uh, uh, leaving it uh, vacant, if you do design, uh, resign in, uh, let's say, just to pick a number, a date, uh, January first, two thousand twenty-five, uh, then uh, uh, that's not. Uh, something I feel comfortable with and just leaving it for 
basically nine months. And I don't think uh, uh, appointing uh, ever turns out in a time when democracy is, uh, is being tested. We need more democracy, not less. And so uh, appointing is, uh, is essential to anointing, and people, people don't like that. And, uh, and I think that a special election, well, we'll get crucified for that too, but uh, that's the lesser of, uh, of the three evils. Um, I think that we have an election coming up here in November, and if things are not good, you need to probably make a decision before the 1st of August so that we can make that. Uh, get uh, uh, that open for the public and for people that choose to run and have that democratic process. It's a health, healthy thing. John, I have two questions about that. Uh, can we, Marcia, Marcia, we're going to go around and let everybody speak now. So, All right. yeah, and then we'll come back. So, um, and so I also would like from each council what you would like to see done, what, what you would like council to decide. So, um, Diane, are you ready? I am. Okay. I, am. Um, I agree with much of what Councillor McCoy was saying. Um, I, I think this is a question about who is it we want to be? And I think we want to be the kind of council that leads by example and shows that family comes first and mental health is important to our society. and. Uh, and I feel that you are still participating, Councillor Martin, and still offering good input. Um, I think maybe one of the things we should talk about is um, what we should do with your board appointments, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I followed through on my promise to stop in at the water board, which has been canceled for the last two times, so it was really easy on me. <laughs> Um, the thing is, I I know you put it on yourself, but if you can, do you feel like you can continue to do your job through 2025 if you're not back? And that's a question I have for you because I agree with um, Councilor McCoy in that I think we either have to put it to the general election, which is also very quick, mm -hmm. or um, we try to keep our council intact until the next election when your term is up. So that's my opinion. Okay. Susan. Um, so, you know, I, I'll echo some of what I've heard from Councilmember McCoy and Councilmember Chris um, in that I would really, I do not care for the idea of a vacancy or uh, not vacancy, appointment to the vacancy. Um, because as um, Councilmember McCoy pointed out, it does become like a shoe-in for, um, for the next general cycle. So I, I, I would really like to use that as a last resort. I don't, you know, as I was reflecting on this, I don't think that there's really time, even if we do hit that August 1st deadline, to that time for people to submit paperwork, to get out there, campaign, and do all all the things <laughs> um, so I don't know how realistic that would be I mean ultimately and I, I made efforts to reach out to as many war two people as I knew and just you know and, and some of the com and comments that I heard back and just asking for um, for feedback and overwhelmingly it was you know people with concern for you and wanting to make sure that you're putting yourself first and your family first and um, and and approaching this with patience and empathy as well. Um, it sounded like from a few people who had who had been really specific about, you know, they're, they're will, people are willing to give it the 2024, but then what do we do at 2025? I mean, for this to continue remotely until the end of your term, and I don't think you have any interest in doing that either. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, it comes down to you. <laughs> and, um, you know, we want to be empathetic and supportive. 
but we also want to make sure that the needs of our constituents are met. I really do not want to see what happened the last time we had a vacant seat where it went so long with just six people. So what is, what's a good way for us to streamline the process where it could be a, an easy transition from, from one to the other? And you know, so just kind of throwing that, that out there for us to kind of problem solve and figure out together. Um, but yeah, appointment is not an avenue I'd really like to, to go by. And you know, whether that means doing a special election in the spring or in the early, early winter, I don't, I don't know how much that would cost or <laughs> what the ramifications would be on that, but that would give us a little more time for people to get out there and, um, and apply for these, or you know, put in their paperwork for I these positions. guess we should ask Don. Yeah, Don? <laughs> so, and I can throw in, I did meet somebody at CML who uh -huh. does special elections. Oh. Our, la our last thing was we didn't have a problem doing special elections. We couldn't find a county that would hold it for us. And that was a unique. Yeah. That was unique. So, that, yeah. so I'm going to read uh, Shakita's. She emailed her position, I guess. Um, she said, I'm writing to let you. Can you hear, Marsha? Can you hear this? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm writing to let you know where I stand with Councillor Martin attending virtually. I believe we should allow her to continue to attend virtually as well as attend in person once a month, including her coffee with council meetings. If we allow her to continue, then the council will be practicing equity towards her situation, which she has no control of. However, I don't know if she'll be able to come once a month, but I'm sure that's negotiable. So that's where she uh, is saying that, um, so, um, once again, my fear is that we have a council with one council member deciding, I don't care who it is or what council it is, deciding how long they're going to be, be gone without giving us an end date. Because when, usually when people go and need to attend virtually, like Shakita when she went to Nepal, she told us how long she was going to be gone. Uh, vacations, there's always an end date. And this is, this is my fear, is that we have one person deciding what they're going to do. So my opinion, because of your, your uh, statement that you in, uh, in December will decide whether you're going to uh, stay on or quit, did I understand that correctly? I said at the latest. Yeah. Um, you understand that I'm essentially living under the sword of Damocles. There could be a catastrophic event at any time um, that would make me either unable to participate in council or, in the worst case, have no reason to stay here. Um, so, uh, believe me, I have uh, no desire to be calling these particular shots. And um, my committing to an end date, a date certain for a decision if I can't resume the normal situation um, of being present most of the time. Um, I would like, I, I, I intended to ask Dawn for this information beforehand, but I suspect that I have the best six-year attendance record of any council member. Um, you know, I think I've been sick twice because I was in the hospital once, um, and I did take a two-week vacation once. Um, so, uh, in, in, I'm certainly treating this as a discretionary job, much less than some other council members have done. Um, but I guess that's all the council members that are present. Is that correct? Um, what I would like to say is first I'd like to ask each of you whether before you decided to run for council, whether you made yourselves familiar with the city charter about the terms by, under which council members could be replaced. 
and could be forced to resign. So first of all, um, this is a very different situation, Marcia. Mm -hmm. um, it's not different than the charter, Joan. No, I'm talking about attending remotely. That's what's different. It, it, it came about during the pandemic. And um, regardless of, so it, so my concern may is I, that- Joan, may I, ask the, may I ask the council members to answer the question? Sure, but I want them, but I need, this is a different situation than- We're not talking about remote participation, which didn't even, even exist when the, I know. When the charter yeah. was written. We're talking about, uh, I mean, the main objection to uh, my proposal is that the council seems reluctant to appoint. But the charter has always said that in the period of time, if there's an absence in the period of time between um, the previous general election and um, the municipal election, between the, the, the nine months after, that uh, the council would, is required to appoint and do so within 30 days. I, I so, agree. I agree with that. Yeah, you can't really, really say that. And while you can, if you choose, prevent me from uh, participating remotely, although I, I guess I'm not sure what the parliamentary procedure would be for that because I don't think there was an end date on the motion that was passed by council. Um, but uh, uh, I don't think it is within the power of the council to cause me to resign. No, it is not. Um, here's the thing, and this is why I say this is totally different than we've ever had before. So when you revert back to um, other other counselors, as far as would they be in this situation? What what would you want them to do? We we didn't have the situation because we didn't have remote attendance before 2020. So um, my fear is someone wanting to be remote for a very long time because we are setting a precedent. And, um, and because you're correct that we made a motion that I assumed it would be a short time that you would be gone, just based upon past experiences when counselors would leave, they would always have an end date. So, um, and it was in the spirit of there being the care that you needed to give your daughter. Uh, and we didn't know what that was at the time when you left, what that meant. So, um, did I, nor do I. So, and actually you will have been, been gone six months by December because this motion was made uh, May 14th. But you based your first argument on uh, residency in, in uh, New York. I did. Um, and, and I did not sign a lease until the 1st of July. And that's why I, that's why I made that uh, statement because December in your statement is not uh, it's not a dead deadline. It, it is when there is January, and I did say before January, so I will have had a domicile, which actually doesn't. You know, you can't. You're not no, Marcia. prevented from serving on. Well, let me speak, Joan. I mean, you're trying to make a decision for me or to um, press me to make a decision, and. It seems to me that you're making a fairly untenable, uh, putting a fairly untenable decision before me. You know, I either abandon my duty to make you comfortable because you might be required to make an appointment that will be physically uh, politically unpleasant, or abandon my child who is in the most distress of any person I have ever known. So um, I think I should be allowed to speak. And what I say is that before I made the statement, and the reason that it took me as long as it did, apparently to your discomfiture, 
to make the statement is because I did a lot of soul searching about what was right for the city and what, what is um, right for me. And what's right for me is that, like every single one of you, I hope, my family is my first priority. And so I am making that a priority. Longmont has always been, for the whole time I've been ser uh, I've served on council, more than a priority. I have I have sweat blood. I have put many hours into this job, a lot more than we we're expected to put in. Um, and you know, you can just look if you if you looked online today you would find that I was actively interacting with constituents all day long from before the beginning of the business day uh, in Colorado right up until about an hour before um, this meeting began when um, I took a break to eat dinner. So I really, um, I don't think that it is reasonable to say I'm not able to do the job. And I also think that, um, that you know, I have communicated with the, the chairman and the staff liaison with my boards, and they understand that I remain committed to um, filling, fulfilling that role, and I've asked them to deal with doing it asynchronously rather than having me present uh, at the board meetings, which is, which have in fact proven to be uh, quite difficult to do and difficult for them too because most of them don't do um, hybrid meetings. Hybrid meetings are difficult. So I have spent the t this time uh, considering what the best thing for Longmont is and what I've concluded is that with the state of play on homelessness having changed, the state of regulatory um, uh, law having changed, and the city having to adapt to that, mm -hmm. with with annexations, with uh, the quasi two quasi judicial issues coming up in the near future, that it would be uh, extremely difficult and irresponsible to leave the council in a state where it can be deadlocked. Um, I have planned and you know have discussed it. I, I asked, actually I asked Shakita and Sean both if they would trade with me on a coffee with council date. Um, didn't get a reply from Sean. I'm um, waiting to see what this meeting comes to. That's kind of what I thought. And, uh, and Shakita, I think, is waiting to see what, what you're doing, and she's also off with her daughter. But she did respond to me and said she, she would, would, was willing to do it if, if her family commitments did not interfere. And otherwise, I'm not sure what we're going to do because um, I, while well, I do expect to take uh, two trips, I think once, once a month, first of all, um, Coming back once a month would cost more than a city council member is paid for the whole year. Mm -hmm. So I think it's unfair to expect that of me, especially since most months uh, uh, there isn't any reason why I should be present. But I did plan to come home, come home for um, both the um, minimum wage vote, which is critical to this city, and for um, the uh, the budget vote, the budget approval vote acceptance. And and um, I think that those two trips are are reasonable, and, and that has been my plan. But, uh, no, I, I, uh, I don't think I should resign, and I think it would be irresponsible of me to resign until there's a reasonably quick way to replace me. Mm -hmm. And if I resigned now, then the seat would be empty in July, August, September, October, 
and November, because the, it, it, assuming that a candidate were found for the special election, um, they would not be seated until December. Okay, Marcia, can we, can we move on a little bit? Because the whole point of this is how long are we, go, as a council, going to allow remote attendance to city council meetings? That's what I am wanting to know. And the question so, is, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. So everybody has kind of given their opinion. I haven't mentioned at all about appointing anybody or, or vacancies. That was, I never mentioned it. So in going with your timeline, I want to put a date certain on when we will no longer allow you to, to uh, remotely join the city council meetings. Um, that is my, and in, and in going with what you said at the end of December, which will be six months, it has nothing to do with residency, that was a different topic, just so council knows that you did sign a long-term 13-month lease. Um, but it has been from May, and it'll be six months in, at, in the end of December. Or no, December. it has not been since May. It's been May 14th is when we made that motion. Yes, but I have not had a lease since that time. No, it doesn't have anything to do with the lease. Since you've been gone, it doesn't have to do. Okay. These are two separate things. I just wanted the council to know that you have done that so that, that there is uh, there is that intent to be able to be in New York longer. And um, for me, council is not just attending minutes. Coffee with council is part of the job. Um, being a liaison to the board really does mean you show up. Um, and that was why I started the pre-sessions, was so that we could get a, uh, we would all know what's happening on these boards. Um, if you don't go to the meetings, either virtually or in person, then you are not really a liaison to the board. It's, it's, uh, so I, what I would say is that we put a date certain at the end of December, not that you, not that you uh, resign, but that we do not allow remote attendance at that time. And After the end of December, I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. That's what I would say. Now I want to hear what um, the rest of the the uh, council thinks about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I would be. I think that's fair. And then it, having a date certain that it won't extend beyond the end of December, then we can know and make preparations. Um, but then still have you here during crucial times of the budget and... Um, it doesn't mean you're going to resign. No. It just means that... No, yeah. well, it, it, can't, it can't mean that I'm, I'm uh, going to resign. I'm a little hurt, Joan, that you don't take me at my word because that's the same thing as I already promised. Exactly, but um, Marcia, you also... That's an open statement. It's an open statement that unless the council decides, this isn't for one council person to decide how long they can or won't uh, be, be attending remotely. It is the majority of council that decides when someone can start uh, attending remotely and when that ends. Not, not just one person on council, and that's what I've been trying to say is that we cannot let one person tell council what they're going to do. We have to, we have to decide, is that what we as a council agree to or not? And, and if you come back and then you have another incident and have to go to New York, that's, that's fine. That's a different issue. But this one, this one instance of remote, I think six months is a is a good timeline for council, but I think that's absolute. That is absolutely fair, that Joan. That I think 
I think that six months, honestly, is, um, even, even though, I would, you know, you can ask, um, the, only, the only board that, well, I did a lot of, of, of um, work uh, this week, in fact, keeping the airport advisory board from getting itself in trouble. Um, and I did a lot of work um, advising um, the senior advisory board um, how to speak to council over many months now. And I thought they did a good job, honestly. And even though they didn't take all my advice completely. Well, you're a good liaison. I, I know. That's why we want to keep doing it. Um, but, but I'm saying that, that uh, none of the uh, board chairs or staff liaisons had any objection to uh, working with me asynchronously rather than synchronously um, because of this need. I think that I had earned their trust um, in the way I worked with them. Um, so, you know, be that as it may, I think that I think that you know six months happens to coincide with the um, amount of time that I, in my conscience, uh, believe that I can sustain this mode of representing my ward, um, and so you know I have no objection to that limitation. I also, you know barring any emergency, will make at least two visits home to Colorado to be face-to-face -face with people at critical times. Okay. Um, and in, in fact, I just had a first, con um, uh, first conversation with a law firm that I am engaging that will actually um, monitor relatives who need supervision like a trust only um you know taking care of the person rather than them taking care of their money that's honorable so I am, mm -hmm. pardon me that's honorable yes i think i thought so too i was amazed they are the only one in the united states that does this and i they happen to be um here in new york okay so um, we we do have uh, two other things on our agenda all right, that's fine. So, uh, I, I, do, we haven't heard that, that there's consensus among the others. No, that's why I would like to to uh, to move on and listen to the other counselors. So, Shakita says uh, her opinion was stay on and come back once a month um, for whatever time length she needs. Um, I say we end the remote uh, thing in December of 2024. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask a question, which you okay. somewhat answered through this conversation. Is I'm just wondering, you know, what's it really about? What are we, what are we really giving up by having a remote counselor? But I think you itemized that well by saying, you know, it's the boards. Mm -hmm. and well, it's the coffee with counsel, and, and it's the interaction in the city. Yes, you know, yes. it is going to events. It's talking one on one. It's having. Uh, conversations uh, in person. It's it's representing your ward in the city, and you can't do that remotely. You just can't. If you're Generation Z, you believe you can. <laughs> We're not, and I'm not. <laughs> so, and yes. council was set so I appreciate up what you're saying. As an in person, yeah. as an in person thing that is available to the constituents of the city. Not 24-7. Anyway, I hope they would stop doing that. But um, Now, when uh, Marsha returns at these pivotal moments, yeah. does that restart her clock? No. No. She has to return continuously. No. Well, I would be, I'm not in favor of an appointment. I, I believe that's our choice, um, Councilor Martin, whether we appoint or we leave the position open. Or um, I would actually. Be I don't believe it is, Diane. I think that's specified in the charter. It's in the charter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Marsha might be violated. And that's not our decision tonight because, or we're not making a decision. We're discussing because she may not resign. Mm -hmm. We're just saying the remote attendance will no longer be available. 
at the end of December. But she may not resign. We're not saying that. So, so even speaking of, of that right now tonight is, is a little premature, I think. There's something that doesn't feel right about that to okay. me, and that there's a lot of pressure on Councilor Martin at this time, and we're just adding to that pressure by saying you have to have a date certain when so much is uncertain. And okay, yeah, I've well, I, I think that's your that's the point. The point is that uh, uh, the uncertainty we want you to be okay. We want your daughter to be okay, and that's uh, you know, as a teacher, I deal with young adults all the time. I know she's not a young adult, but uh, but I will say that it's uh, you know we we see kids, uh, young people that go through these difficult issues, and we want them to come out on the other side in a positive way. We want to support you and your daughter coming down on the other side in a positive way. And, but I think that uh, to the mayor's point, the date's certain. I am, if, if that is really the case, that, that you know, we, we, Don will correct me, that the, that we ran into a, 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 an issue around not having a county that could take that. Got that? And, and it has to be yeah. an open meeting. It's an open meeting. We coordinate our elections. So yeah. County. So, so then. So then we had a. So go ahead, Sean. So we had we had an issue. Then why didn't wasn't there an appointing process after that? I think there's questions of that. If that's if that's the thing where the charter says we're supposed to do that, then that's what we should have done. I think and that was a different one. It that was, that was a different. Yeah. So if we can't we can't have There's a more election. time left on that term. I yes. Understand yes. the question. Yeah. yeah. The appointment on the charter is if there's one year or less remaining on the term. Yes. Yeah. 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 Two years. It was a what? It was, it was two years. Yeah. There was years. more term left. More was time left on that term. Oh, okay. So it triggers a different. Okay, stage gotcha. So we, uh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm still uncomfortable with this. I don't. Nobody wants to force anybody out. What part are you uncomfortable? Uh, I'm with? uncomfortable with uh, all this uncertainty in regards to uh, it being out there uh, till December. Um, uh, I think that uh, uh, the community has an expectation. Uh, and it's it's certainly nothing against you. Uh, your dedication to council is uh, is above admirable, and I respect that deeply. Sean, but, I hate to do this, but we need to move on. Yeah. So well, I'm I'm not. What is it you want? I, I guess I'll agree to the December uh, date if that's what we're trying to draw as consensus here. Well, we're not trying to draw consensus. I just want to know what each of you. Things should happen, and then in motion at a, at a meeting needs to happen, and then we then we decide. I'm going to but, probably have to think more about it. Okay, so you're not ready to make uh, any kind of a decision. Okay. All right. So, Marcia, that's where we are. Um, and, and, and Susie, need to make I, a statement? Well, I just, I'll just uh, restate. I don't know if you had heard me. I do. I, I am in agreement, and I think it's fair based on emails that I've received from War II residents, folks that I've reached out to, the willingness to be, well, you know, they, people have asked us, you know, or me anyways, you know, be patient, be empathetic. And, mm -hmm. you know, and you know my situation. So, you know, I, I totally understand where you're coming from and that, that push-pull of, you know, still wanting to fulfill the duties. And, you know, one of the conversations we had at the library board was everybody on our board, even people who don't live in Board 2, were in consensus that you do follow up with folks. You do, might not necessarily say what they want to hear, I'll be honest, <laughs> but you, you, you communicate. And I think that's the part that's appreciative. And that, 
So, you know, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on this and wanting to make the right decision and having it be through the lens of what your constituents are seeing as well as through a lens of empathy that, you know, we are human and things happen and we have to be able to adjust. Um, you know, I understand, you know, with the notion of COVID, it's, it's changed everything. This would not have been an option prior to, but we have this avenue now. So long circling back, I'm okay with the end of December. If we just kind of, you know, if you come back sooner, great. But that end of December um, timeline, I, I think that's, I think your residents, folks in your ward would be amenable to that. I've, I've had a number of communications yeah. to that effect, and I, I call everyone's attention to um, the communication from Ms. Partridge, who mm -hmm. I thought said it all very well. Um, and you know that um, she has been an advocate in this city for many things, but the first thing that I was aware of that where she was a strong advocate was for supporting those with mental health mm -hmm. issues and their families. Okay. Um, I yeah. think that's great, um, and I and am so moving you along <laughs> so yeah. we can do so these other things. I, I, just, I just think that um, I think I'm being fair with you, and I think that um, my constituents will uh, will support me in this and have done. Uh, the other thing I would like to say is, you know, regarding the boards, there have been several um, boards where I know for a fact that the assigned council members attended maybe one or two, two meetings in the whole two-year term. So that's, uh, and, and no one's ever raised the issue about it. So maybe I'm, we should. Maybe we should, yeah. but no one has. No. Um, these are things that I've learned from other board members, not um, from the council members in question. So anyway, that I said I said my piece. Okay. Um, I'm okay. going to be fine, and uh, uh, you know I will do what I what I have to do, um, regardless. Of but course. I will not betray the city in the process to the best of my ability. And I to reverse that, we will do what we have to do to run the city, but will not betray you in the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. I, I think this is a good discussion because people got out what they think and I do think that at a next pre-session we need to uh, look at the vacancy and appointment and, um, because that wasn't really the discussion tonight. It was what do we do with long-term remote control? Remote control. Remote attendance. So, um, Does that sound right? Diane looks quizzical. Well, I have a concern that we were to appoint, we're appointing somebody new, whereas we're giving up somebody very experienced. Well, there's some meetings that we can just but, take on temporarily as backfill. But remember, she may not resign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, on boards and commissions, I mean, I'm happy to, uh, you know, I served on the Airport Advisory Board in the past, I'd happy to really help take that on for you. Okay. Well, and, and I think sustainability is virtual, so I assume that you're still doing that. I have an easier time doing airport than anything during the day, but the water board is right away. Okay, so we are now at um, the potential location change for uh, monthly pre-sessions. And Dawn, you said that you had some more information, or, uh, or no, I think I think the question you want to discuss is to move board of commissioners, mm -hmm. LHA board of commissioner meetings, and then is if that, is that right? Is that what you were thinking? No, I think no, it was just yeah. so. I think what happened. I think what the conversation is is that typically we've been scheduling the pre sessions. Mm -hmm on the days that we have the Housing Authority Board Commissioner meetings. Oh, not location, but time. And you all, well, you all indicated that you would like to move the Housing Authority Board of Commissioner meetings to the various Housing Authority properties. Ah, And so okay. we talked about potentially moving either the pre-session to a different day, or you all talked about two choices. One, 
moving the pre-session with the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meetings, mm -hmm. um, or moving the pre-sessions off of the day we have the Housing Authority Board of Commissioner meetings and moving that on a study session or a city council meeting day. I think the reason you all proposed the latter was really because um, the public invited to be heard piece associated with city issues, or not the public, but people, residents attending this meeting on the city issues, if that were in a housing authority property, then that creates a different dynamic within that property. Safety and security. We have had coffee and conversations yeah. in housing authority property, so I think we can manage that if we needed to. But it's really, do you want to move the pre-session date to a non-housing authority board meeting? Or do you want to move the pre-session to the location associated with the housing authority board? I think well, that's what you want to talk that about. Was helpful. I think the other two pieces of information that I mentioned in there is for Erica, connectivity can be a difficult mm -hmm. piece at housing authority property. So should be because they're on the city stuff. They don't have any equipment. Oh yeah, we'll have to bring the equipment, equipment is yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think Eugene had said that moving it the pre sessions to either study or regular uh, might interfere with executive meetings. We're managing the pre session agendas. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I would say that it's probably <laughs> good to do after a study <laughs> session just because of yeah. the. Uh, I do before a pre uh, study session night. Uh, and the only thing that might interrupt that, I guess, would be a executive session mm -hmm. if we had to have an emergency one. We can always cancel pre session. Yeah. yeah. I think if yeah. operationally we have the ability to cancel pre sessions in the event that we needed an executive session, mm -hmm. as long as we could talk to the mayor and mayor pro tem yeah. about that, I think we can manage it. Okay. I am going to revert back to uh, Aaron Rodriguez, who just walked in the room, a long ride from dinner. Mm -hmm. We had, um, we did Marsha's statement first because it was a robust conversation. And if you have any uh, input on what, what we talked about was Shakita said that she uh, would like her to continue but come back once a month and for coffee with council. I said that um, I would like an end date to court, to uh, attending remotely that synchronized with what Marcia said about uh, the end of December that we at a meeting make a motion that there are remote attendance at city council meetings in in December of 2024. So we're just putting out ideas and discussing and then we'll make some kind of a motion at a regular do you have anything that you? I think that re remote participation is sufficient. I don't think that calling her back once a month is necessary. Okay. Nor do I think that calling her back for coffee with council is necessary. Yeah. To me, these are essentially voluntary. Uh, I don't feel that required participation is predicated on coffee with council or, or some of the other things. And so I think that the most important part being uh, participation in our actual council activities as far as our, our regular session, study session meetings, as well as LHA board meetings. So if she feels that she can continue with her duties and continue to participate remotely until which time she feels she no longer can do so, I feel that's sufficient. So no end date. Um, do you feel that... She's already imposed one on herself. But it, it is um, up to her because council hasn't agreed to anything. It's up to her to either change that. I mean, she said it, so she can change it anytime if she decides she's going to stay longer. And she's going to say. Sure. And my my opinion was not about Marsha as much as it is. What are we going to do for remote sessions? Are we going to allow people to remote? 
uh, virtually into council meetings for as long as they want? Is this is this a precedent we want to well, do? Well, I think that, I think, <laughs> and that's you have to have a relevant excuse, yeah. not just because I want to. Well, that's that's well, it could be work. Yeah, I think that's the 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 next line. Somebody says, "Hey, I've got this big big." project and I'm going to be, I didn't realize when I ran for council that I'm going to have this project that takes me to New York for six months, that, that or some sort of thing like that. That would be, I think, the, the comparative type of situation that I think you're describing. But it could be something like that. Well, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't find skipping six months of in-person council meetings because of work obligations is an adequate okay reason that's what we wanted your opinion um because you needed to speak up so um we at a council meeting either need <coughs> need to make a motion to accept her statement or um to change it however however the motion that you want to make if someone wants to make a motion or we just totally forget it and that's what this discussion is. Well, I, I think the we, motion that we voted on, I'm sorry. I think we need to do it on next Tuesday. Okay. So we'll put it on the agenda. The was in, until lo no longer needed. So. Right. Do you want to stick with that motion? And that's the discussion we need to have on council. Well, I think that's where we are right now. So mm -hmm. I think that was approved. So. Well, it wasn't where I was at. And it also wasn't where Shakita was at. So. It's not where everybody was at, and Susie wasn't exactly there either. Well, we're so, going to revisit it. That's, yeah. That's, I guess, what you're asking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this, right now, Aaron, we are in a potential location change for um, LHA commission meetings and or pre-session meetings. Mm -hmm. Do we want to have LHA meetings on site at an LHA uh, property, or do and we? My hand was up because of that, Joan. Before Aaron came in. Oh, uh -huh. it is. Oh, see, there it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. It's tiny. It's tiny. I, uh, I, I want to say, since since at present, almost all of the LHA uh, facilities are senior living. Um, I am wondering if. Uh, having the LHA board meetings there might be a little bit disruptive for the residents since they tend to go until fairly late in the evening and would be at a facility that might uh, at a portion of the facility that might also be a common room um, I wonder if we should consider that should be so I just wanted to put that out well you know what we're going to have the LHA meeting uh, next let's just ask them Let's just ask the LHA staff. Yeah, I think in terms of your what you've answered for us on the city side is that you're willing to move the pre-session yes. to another yes. day. Yes. Now we can have the LHA conversation. Right. During the LHA meeting. We'll just have okay. the LHA okay. meeting. So that was a good uh, point you made, Moncha. <laughs> so then we are now, so is everybody okay with that? That we, or do you want to discuss that more about? About moving the pre-session? Yeah. No, that's okay. Okay. That was easy. Your scheduling is very good. Yes. Yeah, that was better good. than we could. Our schedule. Our schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so we have board commission updates. Um, oh, no, no, we don't have time. Yeah. Can I just say one board that I was attending uh, about? I, uh, I stepped up to, to attend the Callahan board the last two months, and they are doing a documentary. Uh, uh, filming right now uh, oh. uh, at yeah. Callahan House. Uh, the last they'll be filming the next three or four days. They uh, I sent a email yeah. to you about uh, they have a uh, uh, what is it a uh, no, I can't think of it. Uh, it's it's like a club club event. Uh, it's kind of a quasi fundraiser sort of thing that that they like to quick give a little shout out to, and then they've got. Uh, they're gaining artists for the uh, the uh, September art block. Okay. Event. So. Okay. 
things are going well. They're, they just got a brand new piano today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they have a brand new piano player? <laughs> Whoever wants to. Experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Can I get council and update on this afternoon? Sure. So this afternoon uh, we met with um, Dean Criswell, Criswell, who is the being a administrator on Resilient St. Brian, and went through and took her through that project and mm -hmm. had a really favorable response. And there may be some additional opportunities for Long Knot in terms of talking about how we built the project, where we are, what that really means in terms of resiliency over time, and potentially uh, working with the state and FEMA in helping other communities develop systems like we developed in that process, and um, there may be some other opportunities that we'll hear about, potentially on a larger scale. So can just I, wanted you all to know that. Can I add something more? So, uh, the whole group, how many were there? Five. Yeah, we, we went around and toured. They were so impressed so impressed with what staff has done mm -hmm. that Deanna, can I say this? Do you know what I'm going to say? She wants to let the nation know how cool Longmont is and what they've done and the way that Harold, to be quite honest, and, and Josh and everyone who's worked on RSVP has pulled together teams to work and how they all work together as well as with uh, FEMA and the, the county and uh, any grants that we got and they work fast, they agreed on things and that it, it looks great. So I, she said, would that be okay? Oh, oh no, we, we really don't want to have <laughs> We don't want to mention how great our staff is. Yeah. Well, good so, job. Yeah. Good job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're done. All right.